The block controller component is a very unique feature in the QSIS Designer software, designed to let you start programming without any knowledge of specific coding languages. Now you will need to understand some basic concepts about programming, which we'll get into in some later videos. But for now, let's just do a basic navigation overview of the block controller component. It has a different type of interface than anything else in Designer. So let's familiarize ourselves with how its blocks connect to each other by walking through an example of a very simple project. As always, I'd recommend opening up the software and following along with me. You'll find the block controller in the schematic elements library under the scripting components branch. Let's drag one into our schematic. The first thing to notice is that it has no properties to adjust here, aside from basic position and fill color. So let's double click the components to get access to its control panel. Right now, this control panel looks pretty empty. If you're doing programming, then you'll very likely need to interact with some custom QSIS controls or connections to third-party devices, and we can add those controls and connections using these plus buttons. Let's click on the plus button for controls, which will add one new toggle button. We have the ability to customize what type of control this is, and we'll discuss all these options in a later video as well. But for now, let's simply rename the control. I'm not saying that control underscore one is a terrible name, but it's kind of like naming your dog, dog. Instead, let's name it something more unique so it'll be easier to follow. I'll name mine amazing. You can name yours whatever you'd like. Now, I'm not going to add any connections because like I said, I want to keep this walkthrough really simple. So let's jump straight into the actual block controller interface, which you can access by clicking on the edit button here in the top bar. This is the block controller interface. In some ways, it's similar to the QSIS designer interface. You have a big empty white space where you can add objects and connect them to each other, and there's a library in the side panel of all the possible objects available for your use. But rather than route audio like designer does, the block controller components are all pieces of a logic puzzle. On their own, each piece is incomplete, but when you start connecting them together, you're writing code. You can see that these blocks are separated into various categories. Values, strings, arrays, operators, etc. We'll talk about what all of these mean later on, so don't be intimidated if they don't make sense yet. There's also a branch of blocks that are associated with the specific control we made. See? There's amazing right there. So what are these blocks? Well, think of it this way. Hypothetically, if there was a block controller to write a regular sentence, it might have categories such as nouns, verbs, adjectives, prepositions, etc. If you dragged in a verb, for instance, it would prompt you to fill in a subject and an object for that verb. If you dragged in a noun, it would provide you the option of adding an adjective. You could drag these into the workspace and connect them to each other, and eventually you'd have a coherent sentence. What makes the block controller so powerful is that it helps you construct that sentence properly along the way. It also will prevent you from making mistakes, like using the wrong type of word. Rather than an empty white space where you can type anything and get it completely wrong, you would craft your sentence using these blocks as a way to guarantee that the end result makes sense. So here in our block controller, it's the same idea, except we're writing a sentence that makes sense to a computer. Our categories are all parts of a programming language. So you still need to understand the basic concepts of what programming is to use this, but you don't need to memorize the syntax rules of one specific coding language, which is the cause of most scripting errors. Visual coding tools like this are often used to teach beginning programmers, colloquially known as children, how to get started. In fact, that's kind of the point of all of this. The block controller makes programming so easy that even a child can do it. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and swap out with this random child I have underneath my desk and he can teach the rest of the video. All right, so let's look at how these blocks connect to each other. Again, don't worry if you don't understand what these blocks do yet. I certainly don't understand because I'm just two years old. Instead, let's just play with shapes. First, we'll look at our block options for the amazing control branch. If you select a block, it will be added to your workspace. This first block, which says on control change, lets you define what action should occur when that control changes states. Basically, if someone presses the button, it should do something. But the do section here is blank, and you can see these little tabs that show you what type of block you could potentially connect here. 
Generally speaking, any sort of command is going to have the matching slot for this tab, which allows those blocks to snap together. So let's look for a command in our amazing branch again. And we can see that a lot of these have the matching triangular slot on the top. Let's grab this one near the bottom that says set control and legend in it. We'll talk about what this does in just a minute. For now, we can drag this back into our diagram, and you'll notice that as they get close, a little indicator highlights the tab and the slot where this new block can be mounted. When you release your mouse button, these two blocks snap together. If I grab the higher block now and move it, both blocks move at once. If I wanted to break these blocks apart again, I could grab the lower block to break it off. You'll notice that you even get this little wiggle animation when you separate the two to show that it's breaking free. It kind of reminds me of Jell-O, and again, since I'm two years old, Jell-O's kind of a big deal for me. But I'm gonna keep these blocks connected for now. Now let's talk about this set control legend block. The legend of a control is simply its visual name, or its label. Yes, our control is identified as amazing, but you can still apply any label or legend that you want onto a button. Right now, our button doesn't have any text on it. This block script that we've written currently states that when the button is pressed, or when there is a change to amazing, then we will set the legend of that control to something else. Now, certain blocks have sections that may be completed using drop-down menus. For instance, if we had more controls than just amazing, I could select a different one here. We could also choose to change a different aspect of the control, such as its color. Again, there are only a few possible options here, which is why a drop-down menu is perfect. In fact, these five options, color, legend, is invisible, etc., are the same five options you'll see here in the available blocks. Color, legend, is invisible, etc. These five blocks are actually all the exact same block, just with a different option pre-selected in the drop-down menu. So don't worry if this seems like a lot of options, it's actually trying to save you time. Sometimes a drop-down menu doesn't exist because there are too many possible options. In a case like this, we'll need to provide our own value. The end of this block has another slot where we can attach another block that has a matching tab. In this case, it's already providing us with a suggested block, this lightly colored block with quotes in it. This is a string block, and a string is just a piece of text. Since this block is changing the button's label, it's suggesting that we probably want a text string here. But we can see that there's an entire library of string options, which provide different ways of composing text. We could select any of these blocks that have the matching tab, and replace the string block on our command. If we were to change the button's color, it would suggest we use a color value instead. You'll note that we have an entire library of different types of values, including that same textual string block, a numerical block, a true-false block, and several methods of selecting a color. But let's keep ours simple. We'll return ours to the legend option, where we can type in a string for the button's label. We can enter whatever label we like. I'll type in on. And let's check to see if this works. Just like all the other controls in QSIS Designer, we can enter emulation mode to test out our design. So back in the schematic, you'll notice that we no longer have the option to add or change the controls in our block controller, as that can only be done in design mode. And if we press our button, ta-da! It now has the label of on. But right now, it always gives itself the label of on, no matter what, even when we turn it off, because that's what our really short script says to do. It says that any change should set the label to on. So technically, we haven't done anything yet that you couldn't have done just as easily by just typing a name on the control. We'll need to add some new conditional blocks that will allow us to change the label to off based on the state of the control. But let's take a quick break before we do that. I, for one, could use both a nap and a diaper change. All right, well, we've learned how to navigate the block controller and how to snap blocks together. And in the next video, we'll learn about some of the other types of blocks that can create some more complicated functions. So move on to the next video whenever you're ready. Visual coding tools. <laughs> <laughs>